Hi students, and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from Central Europe here in Budapest. I hope everybody is having a good week so far. Hi, Byron. Welcome, everyone. This is an IELTS reading section lesson. We are going to be working on a band nine reading response and strategy. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Carolina. And as usual, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com, where we have lots and lots of IELTS help for you to get those high band scores. And for the general IELTS, please visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. This is a reading class, students, so make sure to read as much as possible. Jot down new vocabulary to study later. And this is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class coming up in 90 minutes that will be speaking part two, the cue card, the long section. So make sure you join for that as well. Uh, this is our academic web portal here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join our premium package. If you have questions, you can try our live chat or our knowledge base. We're happy to answer your questions there as well. And um, for the general uh, version of the exam, please visit us at gieltshelp.com where you can click that big red button. And again, we have um, agents waiting to help with any questions. We're certified British Council IELTS Registration Center for Saudi Arabia, and we are uh, certified British Council agents as well. So um, ask us questions if you have them. We're happy to help and happy to answer. Our goal is for you to succeed on IELTS and in your life goals. If you have questions, you can also send them to my email, adrian at aehelp.com. Okay. All right, everyone. So the schedule for the next couple days, just real quickly, today reading, speaking part two. Tomorrow we'll do speaking part three for members, and then we'll do reading with everyone. No classes, 31st to January 1st for New Year's. And then I'm back on the second with some task two for members and some more reading for everyone. So uh, make sure to come back for that. Lots and lots of practice coming up in 2021 with lots of new innovative lessons for you to enjoy. All right, let's get into today's reading passage. Here we go. This reading passage is from our newer exams that we'll be releasing in 2021. And uh, here we will look at this passage today. This is from Academic IELTS, but of course this kind of passage could be your section three of your general IELTS exam as well. This is typically one of those passages that you could see on either the academic or uh, the general IELTS. Okay. All right. All right, everyone. Uh, so here we go. Uh, let's take a look at this. Step number one, uh, whenever we get to a reading passage, is just to read the title and wrap our minds or wrap our heads around the ensuing information, what we are about to read. So here we go. Let's read this title. Let's try to uh, implement a bit of critical thinking on what the content could be. Okay, so Steve Wozniak, the visionary you've never heard of. Okay, I think some of you might have now because this is the second time we're looking at this passage in the last few months, but that's great. Let's see how much you can retain and recall from the previous round. Okay, so Steve Wozniak, Obviously a person, you may or may not know them. Um, this is the part that's going to be, of course, very important and informative. The visionary you've never heard of. What is a visionary? So when you're thinking about a title like this, of course you should think, well, what is, first of all, what is a visionary? What is a visionary? 
Okay, so break the title down really quickly and infer the information. So a great band nine strategy, let's say reading strategy, is to interpret the title and infer the content. Okay, so in this case, we have Steve uh, Wozniak, maybe I can spell that, Wozniak, something like that, uh, the visionary, let's see, yeah, you've never heard of. Okay, so first question that I want to ask myself here is what is a visionary? Okay. Carolina says a visionary is a dreamer, someone that sees the future, uh, creates ideas. Yeah, very good, Carolina. Someone who predicts the future is also referred to as a futurist. Okay. Um, Kyber says uh, a person who can predict the future, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, it's part of it, Kyber, for sure. Carolina says a dreamer. A person that creates novel ideas, a person driven to invent the future, okay? We also refer to them as a futurist, right? Jules Verne being a very famous futurist or Leonardo uh, da Vinci as we talked about him also arguably a visionary and a futurist. Very good. Okay. Uh, good. So now we've got that part of it. So this is some person. Um, and here's the other part of it you've never heard of. Why do you think the author might include this information? So before I start reading this, this is quite valuable for me. Titles are very, very valuable. Don't ignore them. Okay, give them due attention. So you've never heard of. Why would the author say you've never heard of? So why would the author state you've never heard of? in the title. What sense does that make? Okay. Hi, honey. Welcome to the class. Okay. Uh, so Abhishek says maybe it was somebody who wasn't in the front, but worked kind of in the backstage. Yeah, very good, Abhishek. So Abhishek says um, perhaps because it is a, an important person that the public knows little about because they did most of their work behind the scene or behind the scenes, what you're calling backstage. Okay, very good. So perhaps because it is an important person that the public knows little about because they did most of their work behind the scene, the backstage, okay? Or they were not so much in the limelight. They were not in the limelight, but had a major impact. Okay, sure. So that's some good information. And if we can get that information from the title and get our mind working on that, then we're on the right track. We're definitely going to improve our chances of answering questions after the passage correctly. Okay. 
So a person who sees the future, who's an inventor, a creator, but they're not so famous. They, they're maybe kind of in the background or behind the scenes of some other people or person. Sure. All right, good. Now, we take a peek at the questions, and as per usual, we read questions that are going to be in the passage, okay? So let's look at these here. This type of question is always somewhere in the passage. So reading passage two has seven paragraphs, A to G. Which paragraph contains the following information? Now again, viewers, members, read with me, okay? This is not a listening class. I'm not just reading for you. I'm reading with you, okay? So uh, keep my speed, my intonation, and it's called a read-along, okay? If you're ever curious about this, it's called a read-along. And uh, practicing with read-alongs at home is a great idea, okay? So this is another kind of band nine tip or strategy. It's a new one I haven't covered before. So band nine reading strategy and practice. Do regular read alongs. Okay, it's not one word. I wish it were, but it's too much wishing. Okay, um, so that was kind of a joke. But do regular read along. Okay, regular read along. That means um, read a book which also has audio, of course, from a native speaker. Okay, and read with the reader. Okay, how many of you do this? So Yara Bisha, honey, Carolina, Abhishek, Kyber, how many of you actually do this kind of practice um, maybe once a week or at least once every couple of weeks where you're reading a book or reading an IELTS passage, you're listening to an audio playing that passage, and then you're actually reading with the speaker, and you're doing a kind of a read-along practice. Who does that? Anybody does that for practice? It's really, really good. Okay. Kyber says, I do it every time, even in the recording classes. Very good, Kyber. Brilliant. Okay, that's really good practice. There are lots of audio books out there. Okay. Honey, very good. Nice. Okay. So I'm happy to read that, honey. So honey says, I've just started reading the Alice passages with audio. And Kyber says, my accent has also changed. Yeah. It's a very good pronunciation practice. So read along is very good for pronunciation. Absolutely, Kyber. It's a good point that you're making. Yeah, definitely. So lots of benefits to doing read-alongs. And um, there are lots of different difficulty levels, okay? So you can buy some really advanced audio books, uh, even if you have great skills uh, in speaking and uh, reading in English, you can uh, still improve with some advanced read-along, okay? Very good, Carolina. So Carolina says, I do shadowing sometimes. Abhishek says, I never, I just read. Uh, yeah, so Abhishek, Yarabisha, I highly recommend it. You can find on our websites the audio for all of our passages as well, okay? Uh, honey, uh, use the one on our website, and then um, Penguin Books does a lot of audio books, okay? So use the passage audio on our websites, okay? I highly recommend that because that's IELTS. And then another one I, can, I know that does a lot of um, audio books is um, they're called Penguin. Penguin Publishing. I'll check that in a sec. Um, uh, makes a lot of for different skill levels. So you can actually go by skill levels there. If you go on Amazon and you search for audio books, you'll find them. Okay, and usually audiobooks, you'll also find accompanying text as well. Penguin, yeah, of course. All right. So those are a couple of tips for you there, okay? 
All right, um, so let's get back to it. Here we go. So again, remember, you're reading with me, right? All right, here we go. So write the correct letter A to G in boxes 14 to 18 on your answer sheet. Note, by the way, you may use any letter more than once. Okay, so this type of question, extremely difficult to skim and scan for. I don't recommend it. Um, instead, we read these, and while we read them, we paraphrase them. Paraphrase them. Here we go, number 14, information about Wozniak's youth. Okay, so when you're doing these, when you're practicing these, uh, when you read the question like this, paraphrase it right away. Uh, what's another way to say information about Wozniak's youth? Okay, how would you quickly paraphrase that in your mind as you read this question? question. What can you do? There's a few different ways. Okay. So what, what's the wording that comes to mind right away? All right. Information about Wozniak's youth. Uh, Abhishek says data about Wozniak's teenager. That's kind of it's okay, Abhishek, but it's a bit awkward. So you should try to paraphrase it the same way you think the author would do it. Okay? So information about Wozniak's youth. Detail, so Kyber says details about um, Wozniak's. You can paraphrase all of these words. So sure, Kyber, you could say details here. And then you could say instead of about, concerning. Wozniak's childhood. Okay, so details concerning Wozniak's childhood. Okay, or knowledge regarding. Wozniak's childhood. Okay. Or upbringing. All right, so every word can be paraphrased here and it's not too tricky. All right, I'm sure most of you know these words. All right, or many of you do for sure. Okay, so that's what you're doing as you're reading your paraphrasing. A stock price skyrockets, okay, uh, value of a company, right? A stock price is a company's value. So a value of a company increases rapidly. Okay, so just like that, uh, learning from another company's technology, uh, gaining information from another business's developments, the origins of Apple in telephone uh, technology, the foundations of uh, the Apple company in mobile technology. Steve Jobs steals from Wozniak. Steve Jobs loots from Wozniak, okay? All right, so we paraphrase them. And then we go on to look at the next questions. Here it says, complete the notes below. So this is a note completion. You can also call this kind of a summary completion. This could be coming from one longer paragraph or it could be coming from several paragraphs. So again, you have to be really careful to just skim and scan for this, okay? Uh, Steve Wozniak's beginnings. Okay, right away as I read this, I make a connection to uh, this information here, information about Wozniak's youth, okay? So those are likely connected. Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world. Though Steve something has been the face of the company, it is actually Wozniak who provided a lot of the engineering and something ability. Wozniak was born at a time decades before the boom in San Jose, an area which would come to be nicknamed something. Wozniak got his start in technology in the 1970s by making a device called a something that would allow for free long distance calls. The profit from these devices was necessary so he could start something, the company that would change the world soon after. Okay, all right, so we read that. 
we got some ideas there and now we have some multiple choice here um, how much money did Steve Jobs unfairly take from Steve Wozniak okay so here unfairly take is steal so again I'm drawing some similarities because questions can help other questions okay so here how much money did Steve uh, Jobs unfairly take from Steve Wozniak uh, this one reminds me of number 18. Steve Jobs steals from Wozniak. Is every, anybody else making that connection? So members, when you're reading the questions like this, are you making connections among the various questions? It's very important to notice this. And in IELTS, this is a common situation where uh, the questions in different question types are related to each other. Okay, Ois says yes. Abhishek says yes, okay? So you have to be really careful. You want to get these correct because if you get one correct, you'll likely get the other correct. If you get one wrong, you might get the other one wrong as well, okay? So another high band strategy, okay? So band nine uh, reading strategy uh, involves uh, making associations among the questions. Oftentimes, several questions in different question types are related or even concerning the same information. You must make the connection so that you can get them right, okay? So keep that in mind. Okay, so here um, the numbers, I kind of just ignore them visually even uh, because they can be confusing. And then now I have to complete each sentence with the correct ending A to F. So that means that I have a, B, C, D, E, F, six choices. And I have just two questions, which means that there are four incorrect responses. So I'm not going to look at the choices because it's a waste of time and it's confusing, right? So number 25, in just a few years after the time of its founding, Wozniak's something. There may not be an exact link from Wozniak's contributions to Apple to the company today, okay, and something. All right, okay, and I don't look at the choices because, again, there are, sorry, uh, four of them, should be E, uh, or sorry, five of them, but three of them are wrong, okay. All right, and then it's off to the next passage. Okay, fantastic. So as soon as I see this type of question, with the match to the paragraph, I know that I have to do what? Okay, some members should be able to tell me this. So when I see this kind of um, question that asks me to match the information to the correct paragraph, I know that I have to pay careful attention while reading to doing this strategy. What strategy am I thinking of? Okay, so as soon as you see matching info to paragraph questions, you must remember to keep a what? Yeah, very good, Nick Hill. So Nick Hill says to remember to focus on the topic of each paragraph. And uh, simply put, Nick Hill, yeah, you're on the right track to keep a um, visual and structural order of the information that you are reading. Okay. 
All right, now, one way I can do that is when the passage is about a person, and it's common to find these kinds of passages where you have a passage about a person, then uh, simply become that person. So again, this is a special type of strategy. So I'm not just reading about Steve Wozniak, but I am Steve Wozniak, okay? So it's actually really nice and... You're quite lucky when it's about a single person in their history. So uh, if the passage is about a single person, become that person and visualize yourself as that person. Okay? I'm not just reading about Steve Wozniak, but I am Steve Wozniak. All right. So that's what we want to do. And here we go. We're going to read everyone. Read along with me, okay? So from the top, Steve Wozniak, the visionary you've never heard of. Let's go from here, okay? Follow my speed. Founded in 1976, Apple Computer, now Apple Inc., is one of the world's biggest companies. Whatever way biggest is measured, sales, market capitalization, cultural impact, or otherwise, Apple is top of the chart or very near the top. For decades, Steve Jobs was the face of Apple. He was the person on stage promoting the iPod, iPhone, iPad, etc. Profoundly intelligent, though he undoubtedly was, Jobs was not the brains behind Apple's technological accomplishments in the early years. Instead, it was Jobs' friend, Steve Wozniak, affectionately known as Woz, who provided much of the intellectual and technological ability that made Apple into an overnight success. Okay, what is this paragraph about? It's about the brains behind the technology that eventually came to be Apple, not so much Steve Jobs, but Steve Wozniak or Woz. Okay, let's keep going. Steve Wozniak was born in 1950 in San Jose, California, USA. Though his brilliance was clear from a young age, his geographic place of birth was a significant factor in his impact on the computing world. In 1950, San Jose was a small suburb of San Francisco with a population of under 100,000. Over the next seven decades, San Jose's population would balloon by a factor of 10 and by over 20 when taking into account the metro population. This extreme growth was not an accident. Led by companies like Apple, San Jose became the epicenter of what came to be known as Silicon Valley, the beating heart of global technological advances in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. Wozniak was gifted both intellectually and geographically. He had intellectual ability to create and develop the devices he did, but he was also born into the exact location on the entire planet in which their development was taking hold and was valued. What is this paragraph about? Okay, so members, instead of me giving you this one, you give me this one. What is paragraph B about? It's not so much Steve's background. There's a little bit to that. Yeah, oh, it's, okay, I agree. So it's somewhat Steve's background. But more specifically, what is it about? I, I don't think it's just Steve's background here. Can you be more specific, Ois? So what do you mean Steve's background? Okay, Honey says San Jose's development. Mm, somewhat. I still don't 100% agree. I don't think it's the most accurate um, and concise way to, to state this. Abhishek says it's about Wozniak's background and ability. 
Um, yes. Okay. Um, I would say, so if I had to, if somebody asked me what it's about, I would say, let's see if anybody else comes up with it. Okay. So... So this is how I would summarize that. Okay, Caroline says Waz was in the place born to become the epicenter. Um, Steve Wozniak was gifted with the knowledge and location for success. Okay, does everybody kind of see that this is the concise, accurate way to summarize that paragraph, really work on this, okay? So uh, one exercise that I highly, highly recommend everybody studying for the IELTS reading to do is, uh, so this is an exercise, and again, it's for a band nine for high reading bands. Okay, so in partners or in groups, individually read a paragraph, write down in five to ten words what the paragraph is about. then discuss it and identify the most accurate and concise answer. How many of you have tried doing this? So I'm guessing some of you take IELTS in classes and group settings as well. Um, how many of you have tried doing this where you're working with a partner or with a couple of people, you read a paragraph, you write down on a piece of paper uh, what you think that paragraph is about, and then you discuss among yourselves or between you and your partner uh, what your answer was, why you gave that answer, and then you come to an agreement on who has the better answer and why that is. Okay, And sometimes I'm sure you'll find matching answers where you're very, very close in your answers as well. That's usually a very good sign. Okay, Abhishek says yes. I do it myself. Okay, it's really good exercise. All right, very, very good exercise. All right. Okay, so let's keep going here. Nikhil says, I do it by myself. Okay, doing it by yourself, Nikhil, Abhishek, is, is okay, but you should do it in partners. It's much, much more powerful. Okay. All right. Um, so here we go uh, with paragraph C. Wozniak's beginning in the world of technology was his development of what he called a blue box, which enabled a user to make long distance calls at no cost. In the early 1970s, this was an incredible accomplishment. Wozniak, already together with his friend and business partner Jobs, sold over 200 of these blue boxes at a cost of $150 each. $928 in 2020. Without the profit from the blue boxes, Jobs admitted decades later there would have been no Apple. Now just imagine a trillion dollar company like Apple being born out of selling 200 little blue boxes at roughly in today's value of, for about $1,000 a piece. Incredible. Uh, again, visualize, right? Visualize. So this paragraph is about the blue box, which was a critical start to the Apple empire. Okay. All right. Uh, paragraph D. The relationship between Jobs and Wozniak was complicated. When the video game manufacturer Atari offered $100 for every chip that was eliminated from the circuit board, Jobs, who worked at Atari at the time, 
offered to split the income with Wozniak if he could reduce the number of chips used in the circuit board. Wozniak did by 50, but Jobs told Wozniak Atari only awarded him $700 instead of $5,000 and gave Wozniak $350 instead of $2,500, pocketing the difference. Wozniak found out a decade later, but forgave Jobs. Okay, so complicated relationship between Jobs and Wozniak. Jobs is stealing from Wozniak. In the early, and this is okay, remember, we are, so before I go on here, we are Wozniak, right? So in the fourth paragraph in D, Steve Jobs stole from me, okay? I've had money looted, okay? Money stolen from me. All right. So in the early to mid-1970s, Wozniak and Job worked out of Jobs' parents' garage on the first Apple computer. Sorry, let me line this up for you a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Wozniak was in charge of the technical end while Jobs was tasked with marketing. Wozniak had gained computer development experience and expertise through the Homebrew Computer Club, a Silicon Valley group that used the Altair 8800 microcomputer do-it-yourself kit. Based on Intel's 8080 microprocessor, one of the world's first, this framework would become the foundation of Apple's first computer. With money from the blue boxes, Wozniak's previous work at Hewlett Packard and the sale of Jobs' car, the two young men started Apple Computer. Okay, so the beginnings of Apple Computer out of Steve Jobs' garage. I'm Steve Wozniak. I'm working out, out of my buddy's garage, and uh, I've got some knowledge uh, from some computer kit, and I'm building my first computer for retail. Within four years, the blink of an eye, in the time of an investor, Apple's value exceeded a billion dollars. At the time, it was the fastest rise to that mark in history. In that short time, Wozniak had become a multimillionaire, and it was largely due to his development of the cutting edge and paradigm shifting Apple II computer. The Apple II broke the barrier between those people who played around with computers as a hobby and the general public. It had color graphics, an integrated programming language, basic, and an optional 5.2, five and a quarter inch external floppy drive. Every family in the early 1980s wanted an Apple computer and the value of Apple reflected this cultural value. Okay, so this is obviously, I'm now a millionaire, woohoo! I've made a load of money. Apple's become a huge company in just four years. All right, here we go. Though Apple would go on to become one of the world's biggest companies in the coming decades, the journey was not smooth, and both Wozniak and Jobs would leave the company in the 1980s. Though Jobs would return to Apple with much fanfare amidst the production of his 21st century marvels, such as the iPhone, Wozniak would not return, except in a so-called ceremonial capacity. Apple has changed markedly since Wozniak left the company in 1985. While it is difficult to draw a direct line between Wozniak's contributions to the company and, for example, the modern iPhone, it is clear that Apple would not exist in its current form without the technological brilliance that Steve Wozniak brought to the Jobs family garage so many decades ago. All right, what is this about? It's emphasizing the indirect link for Apple Company's success as a result of Wozniak's early contributions. Okay, all right, so there I led you through the journey of a reading passage. 
with critical reading, visualization, me being Wozniak and paying attention to what each paragraph is about. That's what you want to practice at home. That's what you want to master for your IELTS exam. You don't have to understand every word. You don't have to understand every sentence. You just have to understand the key information. Okay. All right. Um, so here we go. Let's do this. Let's answer these questions uh, together now. And let's see how much of it we can do quickly and effectively without searching too much for the information. Or if we're searching, then we're not just randomly searching, but we're effectively searching. There's a huge difference there. Okay. So here we go. Uh, information about Wozniak's youth. Which paragraph is that? Now here, you want to think, did I read that in the beginning, middle, or the end? And roughly where? Okay. OS says 14 is A. I would disagree with you, OS. I visualized the introduction a little bit differently. Abhishek says it's B. Carolina says B. I would agree with Abhishek and Carolina. Uh, just because I remember that um, the introduction was uh, more about um, uh, the introduction to the Apple company, to Steve Jobs and to Wozniak rather than Wozniak's background. And then paragraph B is where I learned about uh, Wozniak being a brilliant child and being born in the right location in San Jose. That's right, Abhishek. So I could check that if I want, but I'm quite confident. So here I would just confidently put in B and then here Steve Wozniak was born. Okay, so there you go. Easy peasy start there. Okay. All right. Uh, so B it is. All right, next one. A stock price skyrockets. Right away, I remember the information. Apple stock reaches one billion. Okay. A billion doesn't need to be capital. It's just a small b. One billion dollars in four years. Okay. Hopefully, uh, others also remember this information. All right. Um, where is that mentioned? So Apple stock reaches one billion dollars in four years. Okay. Which paragraph? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, many of you are saying F. I remember it was somewhere around the middle. Um, let's see. Here we go. Uh, within four years, the blink of an eye in the time uh, of an investor, Apple's value exceeded a billion dollars. There you go. So that's the paraphrase that you had to find. Now, if you're skimming and scanning for stock price, you're not going to get it, okay? You have to catch the information, okay? It seems easy, but that's only because we read it, all right? So here we have B, here we have F. Um, learning from another company's technology. What was that about? Okay, so learning from another company's technology. What did you visualize there? I was Steve Wozniak. What was I doing? Okay, so Abhishek says E. All right, Abhishek, fair enough. What was I actually doing? So Carolina, what was I actually doing? I'm Steve Wozniak, or in this case, you're Steve Wozniak. What were you doing? Whose company were you learning from? Yeah, so Abhishek says working at HP, so Hewitt Packard, and I remember something about the Intel Pentium processor and the 8080 processor, right, Abhishek? Something like that. So E is sounding good. That's kind of where I remember uh, doing that as well. Um, Wozniak had gained computer development experience through the homebrew computer club. Okay. And then, um, 
based on Intel's 8080 microprocessor. Okay, sure. Yeah, that looks good. That's another company, Wozniak's previous work at Hewitt Packard. Okay, there we go. So looking good. All right, next question. The origins of Apple in telephone technology. Okay, so here we're talking about Apple in telephone technology. Where are we going to find out about that? That one was kind of, it's kind of easy because we really visualize that. So the origins of Apple in telephone technology. Rashika says A. Um, not quite, Rashika. Not quite. Okay, remember A introduces Apple. It introduces Steve Jobs. It introduces Wozniak. B introduces the context of Wozniak. Uh, Nick Hill says C or D. What, yeah, you're right, Nick Hill. What was it? Very good, Nick Hill. Nick Hill says C or D. Okay, remember the blue box, right? Wozniak's beginning in the world of technology was his development of what he called the blue box. Remember, I even emphasized this, that they had to sell these 200 little blue boxes to get the seed money to start Apple. It even says here, Jobs admitted decades later there would have been no Apple without the blue box. That's right, OS. Very good. Carolina, nicely done. Yeah, you remember that now. Fantastic. Okay, good. So the little blue box. See, oh boy, if somebody had one of those little blue boxes today, the original 200, I bet you it'd be worth a small fortune to collectors in the computer world. So you could probably, whoever bought that <laughs> for 150 bucks and kept it in good condition, they pro they're probably sitting on a 10000 or $20,000 piece of uh, history right there. Okay, so um, number 18, Steve Jobs steals from Fosniak. Okay. Steve Jobs steals from Wozniak. Okay, that was the money about the uh, Atari giving them, right? It, so it sounds like around D, yeah? I remember it was Atari. Steve Jobs was uh, stealing from the Atari funds, uh, reducing the number of microprocessors. So, yeah, there it is. Remember, stealing. That's a lot of money. That's like $10,000 back in that time, and they weren't millionaires. $2,500 was a lot of money back then. You could buy a car with that. Okay, so uh, not a small amount of change. Okay, so D it is. All right, so there's your correct answers for those. Now, again, because we visualized, because we did some critical reading, notice how quickly we were able to answer those questions, right? Okay. All right, nicely done, everyone. Nicely done. Here we go. Uh, let's keep going. Steve Wozniak's beginning. Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world. Though Steve's something has been the face of the company. Who has been the face of the company? This should be easy. Very famous person. Most of you know this person. You don't need to search for it. That's right, Abhishek Jobs. Very good. Should not have to search for information like, like that. Has been the face of the company. It means that's how we recognize the company. It is actually Wozniak who provided a lot of the engineering and something ability. Engineering and what ability? So what kind of ability did he give which uh, built Apple? Kyber, very good. So Kyber says intellectual and technological. It was the intellectual. So technological, Kyber, is the engineering. And intellectual is the thinking, right? So gave much of the intellectual ability. Very good. Wozniak was born at a time decades before the boom in San Jose, an area which would come to be nicknamed something. Again, I think many of you know this. Now it's a name, so you have to be careful with capital letters. 
Okay, but it's quite famous, especially if you're into computers. Yeah, Abhishek, watch the spelling. So if you have the words, you can find them very quickly. It's Silicon Valley. So Silicon Valley. Sure. Okay. And if I want to double check the spelling, I know it's the answer, so I can look for the answer. And I remember it was in uh, paragraph uh, B. There it is, Silicon Valley, and I can just match it up, and I'm good to go. Okay. All right. So Silicon Valley. Okay, Wozniak got his start in technology in the 1970s by making a device called a something that would allow for free long-distance calls. Now, we don't need to go back and search for that. Again, there's a connection among the answers here. Blue box. And again, it's called. It's a name. So be very, very careful. It's a name. You should use capitals here. If you use small letters, uh, it can be marked wrong. Technically, small letters here are wrong. It's big B, big B. It's the name. It's the blue box, okay, called a blue box that would allow for free long-distance calls. The profit from these devices was necessary so he could start something, the company that would change the world soon after. I'm not even going to insult you by asking. I'm just going to give it to you. It was Apple, Apple Macintosh, of course, in the very beginning, okay? All right, good. So, so far, so good. We're moving along nicely. And this passage and these questions, some of you might be thinking, hey, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, as long as you read the passage and you understand this one, it's not bad at all. If you're just searching for answers, that would be quite confusing, Okay. Um, here we go. So how much money did Steve Jobs unfairly take from Steve Wozniak? A, 2,150, B, 700, C, 2,500, D, 350. A, B, C, or D. Hint, hint, do a little bit of critical thinking here. Uh, think, 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 students, IELTS is a thinker. It's not just... And answering, okay, you got to think, all right? Number 24, Carolina, very good. Carolina, you got a big thumbs up, okay? So uh, it's A, okay? Um, so he lied and said that they got 750, so he split the 750. So he gave Wozniak 350 when he should have given Wozniak 3,500. So we're doing a minus here. And so we will end up with the 2150, right? That's how much he stole, right? Okay. Everybody figured that out now? So the correct answer is 2150. He gave him 350, which is half of the 700 that he lied that they got, but he should have given him 2500. So he only gave him 350 of the 2,500, which means that it's 2,150 that he put into his own pocket, probably to buy the car, which he then sold to start Apple. Huh? Anybody thought about that? Remember the garage? He sells the car to start Apple. I have a feeling Jobs got that car with Wozniak's money. Anybody else get that feeling? I don't know if it's true, but... I have that feeling. All right. Okay. So um, here we go. In just a few years after the time of its founding, Wozniak's wealth grew to millions of dollars, I think. That's how I would finish it. Um, net worth was over a million dollars. So I would go with C there. Okay, just showing you how you can go through this. Uh, there may not be an exact link from Wozniak's contribution to Apple to the company today. Um, how would you finish that? So how would you finish this sentence on your own? There may not be an exact link from Wozniak's contributions to Apple to the company today. How would you finish that? 
Remember, it's in the final conclusion, that information. And I think it's quite clear, even if you didn't understand every word or every idea, it should be fairly clear. So how would you finish that? There may not be an exact link of Wozniak to Apple, but... But what? Based on the conclusion. Yeah, very good, Carolina. So Carolina says, but it wouldn't really be possible without his help. Oh, it says, but he had important contributions, I think is what you're trying to write there. Oas, Abhishek, through his knowledge in engineering, it would not have been possible. Right, Abhishek? Okay, so something like that, yeah. Um, so, though his contributions were plentiful, but the company could not have existed without him. I think that looks great. So, I'm going to go with that one. Everybody agrees? B? C and then B? Yeah? All in agreement? You agree? I agree. Fantastic. Okay, everyone. So that's how you do it. Lots and lots of advice and tips and strategies for uh, today's class. I'm glad you were with me here. And uh, hopefully you stick around and come back in a half hour where we're going to continue with some speaking part two cue card. It'll be a fun one. So make sure you come back and join me for some strategy and practice. And of course, all of our viewers will be able to join in in the chat. And I welcome you to hang out with me and learn some more English and IELTS. You are very, very welcome. Yeah. Oh, as he was the foundation in the company. All right, Kyber. Happy New Year. Back at you. You're very welcome, Nikhil. And hopefully I will see all of you in a half hour. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. Bye.